Hi there, it's Stefan from Celemony from Germany. We're showing the new Melodyne 4 at this year's NAM. And there are a lot of new functions in it, and I probably show you the three main exciting new things we have here. The first one is about the workflow when you use it as a plugin in your multi-track live session. For example, I have Melodyne inserted here in my uh, door on several tracks. And the thing is, I can view all tracks here from inside Melodyne just in one window. So I'm, I'm looking at this one voice here, for example, and I'm looking at this one, and I don't need to change windows anymore. I'm, I'm much faster now. And I've, I can also select several tracks at once, like this. And so now I see the, the harmony that's playing here. And I'm still mixing it on, on, on different levels on, on, on my door. So we, maybe we should have a go and listen in here. I can then, uh, for, for example, edit them all, or maybe for showing a better result, I, I even could select all tracks. In this example, I have two tracks, uh, 12 tracks, sorry. With just one click of one slider, I bring them all into tune. So before this would have meant I would need to open 12 windows do the same action 12 times and, and now I'm, I'm, I'm That's really neat. So is this across all door, what, what formats does it need to be to have that multiple channel editor? Uh, it's, this works in, in all doors uh, like uh, even Artas and of course AIX so Pro Tools, uh, audio units, uh, VSD and, and, and everything. So it's not part of the uh, Melodyne API integration it's actually? It's, it's, it's not part of this uh, era, era thing you're talking about, the special integration we have in, in Studio One and in, in Cakewalk so now it works in Cakewalk and, 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 and Sudi One of course too but it's also what I showed you here Logic works the same way in Cubase or, or Pro Tools or whatever. Oh, nice. So it's nothing new actually in, in terms of what you do musically the results uh, you achieve here are the same than you could before but the workflow is much nicer and the musicality of how you look at, at your recording because you can see so many of the, the, the um, the chord changes and, and everything. Another thing, uh, I switched to the, the standalone uh, version now because if you buy Melodyne 4, uh, you get both the standalone and the plugin version. And with the standalone version, which we, we see here, we can do uh, just let me uh, load some different stuff here. Uh, we're talking about um, tempo now, not quantization, not to mix it up. The, the tempo of a recording, I have a, a live recording here. It's just one, one uh, track. Is that Chet Baker, a firm favorite with Belladine? It's uh, again Chet Baker, <laughs> kind of tradition. It's a different recording, I understand. So, you would hardly think that uh, a software could find a, a, a metrum in there because there are no transients in the sound, but the tempo recognition from Melodyne does not only work with transients like other technologies of that kind. We have the advantage of knowing everything about the notes and therefore we can find the tempo in much better precision. So let's listen to this recording again. This was obviously played without a click and I just turn on the click later now. And that's mapping the whole tempo in real time? Yeah, it's, it's mapping this. The moment you load in the file, it's mapping the tempo. I can zoom, zoom in here to, to, to make it more visible where the, where the changes are. For example, later on here he's, he's ri rising the tempo. Very jazzy. Yes. So is this, is this in a way um, related to, because you did that, that uh, specialist plugin that, that uh, counteracted wow and flutter in old recordings. Actually, yeah, yeah, it, yeah the, you know this capstone you're talking about. It's, uh, it's something different, but uh, they, they have one thing in common, of course. They all have work uh, based on our DNA technology. The, the secret for this tempo recognition here is that we, we know the information of the nodes and therefore we have much more clues where the tempo would be. And that makes it easy for us to, 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 to find the tempo. And so can you flatten out the tempo in this if you want to? Uh, yes, I, this recording I actually wouldn't want to do it because no. it doesn't get better. But sure, we have this function in here. Just select the part you want to flatten and, and there you go. Or you flatten out the whole thing. And let me just undo this. 
you see when I do this uh, change to the tempo curve or maybe I do some some uh, manual change here like selecting a bunch here. you see how the notes move along with the change bars and that's the that, that's the good thing about it that now the, the notes align to the bars and it's much easier now to even quantize a recording like this something impossible before because if you not play with a click you can't quantize later that was uh, how it was before and now it's possible and, and other, other things where it's very useful you can drag in a, a drum loop now for example I take a pretty a standard machine drum kind of loop from my Apple library I don't know in which tempo it was but Melody knows and it automatically stretches it and now the machine drum is following the, the, the live musician and not the other way around Let's listen to this slowing down and the drummer is slowing with it and then rising again very subtle changes here but of course I can also do some more uh, weird stuff uh, not, maybe not like this I could for example just do stuff like this and as you can see the whole music is following and this is true for for all tracks I could even do stuff like this like slowing down just one beat So total uh, precision and, and freedom. And I'm working in the standalone here because that's the way you do it. You go in the standalone, do the analysis. The files are but then I could go into the, the um, export menu. Pretty easy. And there I can select the tempo map. And then I save this and I open it up in Pro Tools. And so I start doing my overdubs all in my uh, door of my choice. So it's Melodyne. In this example, I use Melodyne only for finding the tempo ones. And then I can move over to a different software if I like. That's really neat, actually. Really neat. So could you, I mean, we were talking about camps down. I mean, can you, could you correct that level of variation and, uh, if you want, uh, be, or would you have to do it quite manually? No, no, that's a different thing. It's, uh, the, 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 the flutter, uh, you know, the wow and flutter. It's, it's uh, the wow is the the the, the, um, the longer movement, and the flutter is the fast movement, and that's different to the. To, we're talking here about the actually the tempo, the pulse of the musician. That's actually the thing that you and me would do when we we tap our foot or, or, or not our head or so. That's the, the musical thing. It's not a technical thing like capstan. And um, that's great. Another thing uh, we didn't uh, talk about yet is the the sound. I, uh, you see, in Melodyne we have a new uh, sound editor which is working on the harmonic spectrum of a sound. On the first side it looks actually a bit like a, um, a graphic EQ. Like and spectrum the, analysis almost. Yes, and if I, uh, you see the dancing balls, they look like um, in an analyzer. So, each bar is representing a, a, a frequency, but the special thing about it is this frequency isn't fixed. It's dynamic. Isn't this it? frequency is relatively, it depends on the bass pitch of the note. This note here, for example, has a certain pitch. This is represented by the first bar, which is the fundamental note. And say this would be an A, then that would be 440 hertz. And the second bar would be the double, so it's 880. But now the next note is a little bit higher. Maybe this is 1K bass frequency, then this would be 2K or whatever. So, so you get the idea. It's a relative EQ. You can't do this with any other EQ. And it's a very po powerful thing for sound design. I can give you some examples with this guitar here. I can go in there like with a notch uh, very precisely, or I use these tools here to change several bars simultaneously. I can even get rid of the VAR if I like. It almost sounds like an acoustic guitar. Yeah, yeah. Okay, I can bring back the VAR again. I do the same thing for the dynamics. Now it's really a plucked guitar and now it has a lot of sustain. I mean, it almost sounds like you could change, you're changing it from a, a steel piezo pickup to uh, a gut string acoustic guitar. It's actually, the, the difference to a, a normal EQ is that you really change the character of the instrument. 
it's kind of an audio synthesizer actually, but it's not a synthesizer. We don't re-synthesize here. We are not working with just single uh, sinus generators or so. We are always based on the material that's on the track. And what sort of granularity are we talking here? I mean, that looks like, what, 100? Uh, the granularity, what do we mean? Well, like how, 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 how narrow is each frequency? It's like in the, it's in the harmonic spectrum. It's always from one uh, um, uh, overtone to the next. It's always the double frequency. That's, that's the harmonic spectrum. We have, however, we have a Q here. I can switch from the harmonic, what we just saw, to the EQ. This looks uh, similar, but it's, now we have actually really fixed frequencies. It's like a graphic EQ, but a semitone white. And um, it, it follows the master pitch of the, of the recording and then can now, for example, uh, cut the bands that are on pitches that are or, or on frequencies that don't correspond to pitches within the key. So I clean up this this thing here or the other way around. So it's a powerful EQ also. What does that sound like? That, sound, that um, looks interesting. Let's let's uh, maybe uh, watch this at, on on a different file. Um, like. Say I use it on this guitar here. I need to turn up the volume a little bit, right? I can uh, alter the contour of the stuff to make the, 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 the acoustic fingerprint of the instrument even stronger or the other way around. Beautiful for, for uh, match EQ kind of stuff because I can copy this from this guitar to another guitar and so on. And I can uh, even go into uh, synthesizer uh, things like moving the formants via an envelope to get a more banjo kind of sound sound here. Do the same of course with the like an e Ebo thing if I would use this on a on a, on a e guitar if I'm I, I'm doing this for the amplitude here now. And so on. So it's a. How do, you, how do you guys get any work done? I mean, you're just testing the stuff. That's just. Uh, actually, it? actually, we we uh, we worked uh, for some time on the, on this idea. It, it's it's a, a lot for us. It was a logical thing because we, in order to do uh, DNA, in, in the first place, you, you need to analyze all the harmonics. So that's work we did in 2008, 2009, and so we were thinking, how could an interface look like to give you access to all this overtone structure and so that was uh, the thing that was driven us and which led to this improvement now that's amazing i mean so in terms of kind of general musical applications I mean, obviously a lot of what we're hearing is it's quite dramatic just so that we can hear what's going yeah. on i mean in terms of the sort of subtlety and uh, of what can change those things i mean where where do you see most of its strengths lying well where are people going to be using it you think? Uh, uh, we would see i mean it's on the first side, it's, it's obvious it's for sound design because you can do so radical changes. And uh, but I, I, I found out myself, and then our, our testers uh, gave that feedback to me as well, that they use it actually as a mixing tool on every track. And they just do a subtle thing here. A very important thing, if you use the Alt key, you can do very subtle things, which is something you should remember because when you start using it, you're, you get uh, taken away by, by the fun. But, Actually, you can do very subtle things, and, and uh, this is a, a mixing tool to clean up your mix, or on the other hand, to do sound design. And it's, I, I'm pretty sure some people will use it in a completely different direction than other people will, but that's nothing new for Melodyne. That's well, uh, and how is it? I mean, obviously, all of this extra capability. I mean, how is it for CPU and optimization? And what kind? Of, I mean, I'm not expecting it to have no footprint at all, but it must be making quite heavy demands on computer to get this kind of level of... Thing. No, it doesn't have any additional uh, footprint uh, compared to, uh, to, to the algorithm itself. So if you, if you open up a, a guitar or whatever polyphonic instrument with the DNA algorithm, you have a, a certain footprint. If you use the sound editor or don't use it, it's the same. It doesn't matter. It's no additional footprint. But you need to know if you want to use the sound editor, you need to use this DNA algorithm or the melodic algorithm. You can't use the percussive algorithm because you, you need, or Melodyne sound editor needs to have the information about the pitches which you don't have in the percussive. So if you want to use it on drums, you have to switch the algorithm for the drum. 
and then this gives you a little higher footprint. But on, 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 a, on an old Mac like mine here, it's from 2011 or so, you're working at, on 30 or 40 tracks without a problem. And this is, uh, it was just recently announced, wasn't it, just before, before now, so available now. Upgrade paths and all those kind of things available, yeah? Yes, it's, all, it's out. Uh, it's already out since four or five days and then a few thousand people already use it now. And uh, if you're an existing user, you have uh, very special upgrade offers, for example. Uh, if you are running the editor version and now you want to go to the studio version and go from editor 2 to a studio 4, it's uh, $149. And you get all the new features, all the multi-track stuff. But this is a limited offer until the end of April, so check our website, you find the prices there. So, uh, I think in medieval times you would have probably all been burned as witches, right? This is such a magical thing, it really is sort of mind-blowing. Thank you. And it's fun to do it. I mean, it's, we, we are lucky because we are working with this since quite some time now. Yeah. And then, so. Well, I remember I was there at the first unveil and everybody was just like, what? Yeah. Yeah. Amazing. Yeah. Thank you so much. Thank You're you. welcome. Enjoy the show. Award-winning customer service. Fast, free shipping on most orders. Own the gear of your dreams today.